Hello, it's Mark Matosh here from Markham 3D, and this is part six of creating this landing gear. In this section, we'll be rigging and doing a little bit of animation. So please make sure you like and subscribe. If you want access to the full course, even though this is the last part, jump over to Gumroad or jump over to my Patreon. Bone, or let's just start off with the armature. What I need to do is I'm going to select this and these faces here, because this is going to be kind of like the start of our armature. I'm going to go Shift S, cursor to selected. And we know that this face and this face is the center of this piece. So now if I go tab into object mode, shift A, let's add in an armature, single bone. We know that this tailbone sits exactly in the center of that rotation there. From here, let's come down into this piece here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press C to select, select that middle bit, shift S, cursor to selected. How about we deselect this with middle mouse, shift S cursor to select it, there we go. From now, let's go back into our armature. I'm gonna press E to extrude, shift S cursor to selected. And then let's do it one more time for this bottom area. So let's deselect this, C, and we're going just to select the center there, shift S cursor to selected. Let's select our armature, E to extrude, left click, shift S, selection to cursor, there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extrude on the Y axis and this will be our foot. Now the next part of, next piece of the puzzle will be these pistons. So let's go back into this object. What I'm gonna do is let's select all these internal faces. There we go. Shift S cursor to selected and that'll be right there. Oops, obviously we've got something else selected. Yep, down here, let's deselect that. Shift S cursor to selected. Back into here, I'm gonna select this bone, Shift D to duplicate. Let's select the head, Shift S curse, uh, selection to cursor, there we go. And then from here, I'm gonna come down to this bottom section. I'm gonna go C and select both those faces. Into here, Shift S cursor, uh, selection to cursor. Whoops. Sorry, let's go back into here. Shift S, cursor to selected. Into the armature, Shift S, selection to cursor. And what we need to do now is split this up. So I'm gonna select the bone, right click, subdivide. And we wanna flip this around. So at the moment, if we come up here, here into the pivot point, we can see that we've got 3D cursor. We're gonna change this to the medium point. So now I can go rotate 180 and we've got some funky results. So what we need to do is come into the bones and relations and let's remove that parent. So now when we go rotate 180, there we go. You can see it's a little bit off kilter. So I'm just gonna press Alt R to reset the rotation. And now that's looking rather nice. Let's shift D to duplicate that bone. Let's come into here and select this area, select our bone or our tail or our head, sorry, shift S. Oh geez, did it again. Back into object mode, shift S cursor to selected, shift S selection to cursor. Let's come down into this one here. C, shift S, oh gosh, shift S cursor to selected, shift S selection to cursor. Let's select all that with a control L, select everything that's linked, right click, subdivide. Let's select our bone here, remove the parent, then we can rotate 180 degrees, Alt R to reset the rotation. And we've got one more to do down here. Let's come into here, I'm gonna press C to select that, Shift S cursor to selected, into the armature. Let's select a bone, Shift D, grab our thing, Shift S selection to cursor, one last piece. And that bit there, Shift S, cursor to selected. Shift S, selection to cursor. Oh yeah, still, right click, subdivide. Let's select that bone, delete the parent, rotate 180 degrees, Alt R to reset the roll. All right, now the best practice is, rather than having this all fuffling about, is we need to name these. So I'm gonna select the top bone and call that one main. This one here will be upper leg. 
and we've got lower leg and we have foot and let's now ma uh, name these piston bones. So I'm going to select this bone here and I'm going to call this main P1. This one here will be upper leg P1 because this is piston one. I'm going to go to this one underneath. We will call this upper leg P2. So that's how I'm going kind of like one, two, one, two. So this one here will be lower leg P1, lower leg P, P2, and this one here will be foot P1. Excelente. So let's now jump into pose mode. And obviously you can see nothing is happening here. Let's go back and we see nothing is being followed. We do need to go back into edit mode and fix up some of the parents. So let's go object and into edit mode. So this bone here will be parented to our foot bone. So let's go parent, you are our foot bone. This one here will be parented to our lower leg. This one here will be parented to our lower leg. This one here will be parented to our upper leg, upper leg. And this one here will be parented to our main. There we go. So now if we go into pose mode and we start rotating, we can see all the bones are moving. Now we need to do a little bit more work. Now I've actually down here on this piston, I've actually moved it from here to up here um, because of the way it doesn't really work. Before we start adding constraints, we now have to actually add in empties at each one of these points. If we were to track the positions of the bones, the problem is, is the bones are calculating each other and the actual animation will become actually fairly wonky. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode and let's go into wireframe. I'm going to select here, shift S, sorry. Let's select here, shift S, cursor to selected. Let's go tab into edit mode, I mean object mode, shift A, let's add in an empty. And then I'm gonna come up here, select this bone, shift S, cursor to selected, tab, empty. And so what we need to do is we need to add now empties to all these um, points. Oops, where's my bone? Here it is, let's select that. <laughs> Give me the bone. Yep, there it is. Shift S, cursor to selected. Um, shift A, let's add in that plane axis. I mean, empty. Back onto the bones here. Shift S, cursor to selected. There we go. Two more. Shift S, uh, cursor to selected. Add in that empty. And lucky last, where are you bone? Why are you doing this to me? Shift S, cursor to selected. Control A, add plane axis. Now from here, we select our armature, we go into pose mode and we've got to set some constraints now. So from here, add bone constraint, we're gonna track uh, two and we're gonna select that one there, this one here, track two, let's select here. Um, and so we're kind of tracking to the opposite empty. So this one here, we'll go track two um, here, I think it's that one. This one here will track to this here. So let's go track to eyedropper from here. User will track to this one. And user, last of all, track to this one here. And there we have it. So now if I go into pose mode, we can see everything's tracking. We can see that we can't come out too far on this one. But if I go to side view, let's rotate that up. And that hasn't worked. <laughs> Silly Marco. So let's go into object mode and we need to parent our empties to our mesh as well. So let's select our empty. We're going to go into our constraints, add object constraint, child of, and it can't be a child of itself. Let's go in and select our armature. This one will be main. And then we need to set the inverse, so it brings it back. Let's select this empty, um, child of, let's select our armature, and it'll be upper leg, because we're pairing, parenting it to the leg, set inverse. This is the next one. 
uh, child of the armature. This one will be upper leg as well. Set inverse. Where are we here? Oh, no, that's right. That's right. Um, the next one is this. This will be lower leg. So child of, let's select our armature. Child of lower leg, set inverse. This one here, there we go. So I'm just trying to make sure we get the right ones. Child of um, armature, and this will be lower leg, set inverse. And this one here will be child of, whoops, armature and foot set in verse. So now we can select our armature pose mode. There we go. Everything is lining up. Everything is hunky dory. And there we have it. We have rigged up. There we go. That's maximum we can do. Oops, bring this one back down. There we go. Now we've gone solid mode. We can see, I can turn off the display. So we just see this. We can see it's all folded up. Technically, does that piece fit in there? Not really, so we might just fold that one out. So we'll select this bone here. Rotate and XX. So there we go. So that's kind of like the maximum there. So we can see how much it unfolds. Now, if we wanted to animate this, what we can do is we can probably go to frame one. I'm just gonna select everything and go Alt-R to reset the rotation, Alt G to reset the location, just in case we did that. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna press I to set a keyframe and location, rotation, and scale. Well, actually, we only need to really worry about rotation. And then I'm gonna set frame 250 to be our end frame. So probably this here, all the way up there. This one comes into about here-ish. And then we got our foot probably about there. Let's select everything. I set that rotation. And so if we press play, this is what we've got. It's a little bit slow, but you know what? I'm fine with that for now. We can see that the tracking is looking really nice. The pistons are following each other. Awesome, brilliant. Now what I actually want to do is I want the lower leg to start moving first and then the upper. So I'm gonna grab the upper leg and I'm probably just gonna move, whoops, I'm just gonna select the first keyframe and move it over 20 frames. So we can see that the bottom leg will start moving forward first. And then I want the upper leg to come uh, to finish first. There we go, that's pretty cool. So I mean, technically we could select everything. Let's just speed it up. So what I can do is I can select here. And if I were to scale, it'll scale from whatever frame we currently on. Let me just make this window down here a little bit bigger. So for instance, if I were to be here and scale, we can see that everything's scaling around that point. So if we come back to frame one, like we can scale, we can speed it up by half. So we do a scale of 0.5 and then we press play and we can hold that. And then really what we could do is I could shift D to duplicate those frames and then scale X minus one. That didn't work, did it? <laughs> so let's go shift D, move it over by one, scale X minus one, and there we have it. So what will happen is it'll come up, hold its pay place, and then it'll come back down. Now, funny enough, with the animation, when it works fine, it works beautiful. However, our materials now will be a little bit off. So for instance, if we watch, we can see that our marks are staying still. How stinking annoying is that? Quick fix, We what we can do is we can select our objects. I'm going to Alt H, just unhide everything with Alt H. Select everything. I'm gonna press U, Smart UV Project. And we'll do that with all the pieces. U, Smart UV Project. This one here, you smart UV project. This blaze plate here, whoops, select everything. You smart UV project. The pistons, smart UV project. And lucky last, Alt H, select everything. You smart UV project. Now we need to come over into shading and we need to change object to UV. And so that's our yellow metal. Metal 2 will be now UV to vector. And I believe 
uh, material one will be UV to vector. So now if we go into layout and we start moving, we can see that at all the little marks stay in place, which is exactly what we want. And so that is pretty much the end of the course. Thank you very much for hanging around for this long. Please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel, share this around with your friends. Let me know in the comments below, has this actually helped you in any specific way? If there are other things you would like to learn, please leave a comment below as well and let me know. And I'm more than happy to start exploring other avenues for you as well. So until next time, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. And take care.